We're happy to have everyone here on our Romanian day, Sabbath. And it would be good for those who are still, uh, I can see the black and white screen, to, if it's possible for them to, those who are able to, to show their faces, I'd like to be able to say hello to them, instead of saying hello to the name. So those who are able to show their face, is it possible for you to do so? In the meantime, I'd like to welcome everybody. You know, it's so good to see every one of us here. And I can see, Monty, you've got a visitor. I'd like to say happy Sabbath to your visitor. And I'm, we are very happy to have you with us. And I pray that as you worship with us, you will enjoy the day. Brother and Sister William, we haven't seen you for some weeks. Thank God that you're here. And, uh, you know, have a blessed day. And all the others, you're our regular, who have always yeah. been here with us. So we're very <laughs> happy. Somebody's trying to say something. No. Okay. So I just want to welcome everyone to Bilston Seventh Adventist Online Church and also to our special program, the Romanians Day. And as you go on, you will discover why this is our Romanians Day. We've got two very special people sitting and looking and smiling radiantly at us at this time. And, but you know, it will be clear, made clear as we go along. And for that, at this time, you know, I'll just read the scripture reading, Psalm 66, verses one and two. Psalm 66, verses one and two. Two. He said, Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing for the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Yes. Right? So, you know, we are gathered here to make, God, you know, to praise God. And nowhere in our home. You know, but there's no, that is more reason why we should praise God, why we should let everyone, our neighbors, the whole street knows that we are praising God because he's worthy to be praised. And so as we worship today, let us remember that God is in control of us and he will give us the desires of our heart. At this time, can we, I oh, guess, take our hymnal and turn to in 294, 294, there's power in the blood. Amen. At this time, we'll have our prayer. Brother Rakesh. A most grace, Heavenly Father in heaven. We thank you for the blessings, O Lord, that you are best upon us throughout the past week. Thank you for protecting us from all sorts of harms and dangers. Thank you for providing us with all sorts of necessities. Thank you for the privilege, O Lord, which you have given to us, where we could gather at thy feet in thy presence to bring honor, glory, praises unto thy name. O Lord, we come to thy presence with heart full of gratitude, thankfulness and sincerity. We humble ourselves in front of you. Lord, we are unworthy. We are sinners. But you are loving, living, eternal Father who always take care of us. Father, thank you, Lord, for the marvelous blessings, especially today, Father, we pray for your blessings upon us as we read and learn and share 
from thy word of God. Help us to equip ourselves in order to serve effectively in the mission which you have given to us. We pray for the Bilston Church, for its um, leadership and for the members. Take care of them, Father. Thank you for its ministry in and around Bilston. Let our ministry be a purposeful in carrying out our mission effectively. Also, we pray for the church at large, O Lord. Be with the leaders, pastors, workers, members. Especially during uh, this pandemic period, you have been with the church. It's been a challenging and testifying, uh, testing time for the church, but you have taken care of the church. Also, Father, we pray for um, ministry of uh, brother and sister Adina in, at Bilston Church. And thank you for this special day which we have uh, given in order to remember and celebrate the heritage of uh, Romanian Adventist Church. As they go back to their homeland, Help them to continue to serve in thy ministry. Amen. And to win many souls unto thee, Father. Amen. Thank you for the diversity which we have given to us. I know, Father, as humans, we have many challenges, but you have shown us that way of uh, only sharing the gospel of love in a holistic manner. Especially, Father, we pray and remember about the sick, poor, and the needy, O Lord. Stretch forth the healing hand upon them. Bring them back to normal health and strength, Father. And give them the opportunity to come back and witness about you. We pray and remember about people who are suffering due to natural disasters, calamities, People without food, water, clothes, and with shelter, take care of them, Father. As we are living in the last days, Father, as you have, uh, as we have studied this morning, the harvest is plentiful. We need more workers. Help us to form the effective groups individually, collectively, working under the flagship of this organization and bringing many souls unto the Father. Be the speaker of the hour, O Lord. Help us to review and revive ourselves. Make it a happy day in our lives. And finally, O oh Lord, when sun comes in the clouds of heaven, may we all have a place in the eternal kingdom. Write this few blessings in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Francis. At this time, we will be favored by a musical instrument, I mean, rendition, rather by Christina and company. And this will be followed by testimony by Brother Lucas. Luke. <laughs>
Sabbath to everyone. Sabbath. I knew la <coughs> Excuse me. Last week, week Clarence asked me to say something about this Sabbath. I knew it's going to be. <laughs> um, but uh, as a Christian, we all, when someone asks us to say something about God and what God done in our life, we never have to say no. Actually, we always have to say yes and speak and tell everyone how great is our God. Mm. And um, Today I'm going to speak um, about uh, my life with God, and but for this one, normally I have I have a problem. I need a lot of time to tell how great is was God with me till now. But today I'm going to be short. I'm going to speak actually about <clears throat> three points of reference in my life, in my and uh, three answer which God gave me to to my prayers. And um, when I was, um, well, first time I knew I heard about God, I think was when I had seven, when my parents decided to get baptized into the Pentecostal church. And uh, I started to go every Sunday at the church there. Uh, but when I was around 16, 15, 16, something like that, um, I decided to do what everyone of that age do. So not going to church, start smoking and even drinking. So that's what my next step to do. But I knew what I'm doing is not good and it wasn't right because um, I knew God doesn't accept that. And after a long three years, I decided to um, to go back to the church and um, stop doing what what I was doing was wrong, and I decided, yeah, it's time to go back to God. Um, but the problem was um, I couldn't stop smoking. I say it's been three and a half years since I was continuing smoke, and say, well, I thought it would be easy to stop. Just stop, and that's it. So I keep trying and trying and never, never succeeded more than a week, more than a few days. And I try again and failed. And um, the problem was my friends as well. When they started to smoke next to me, the smell, I feel it. It was, I was feeling like my bone are, are melted. I need to smoke. I need one as well. So it was something, I knew something bad, but I remember something in, um, from the church telling that, um, God is uh, it's powerful as long as we allow him to work in our life. If we say stop God or no, I don't need your help, God is not there to help. God is always there to help us. 
But if we say no, it's not going to help us. So I run away home. I remember that day, run away home. And I says, God, I'm doing this only once because I know you're great. And I know you answer to our prayers. I need to stop smoking. You know, I tried, but I failed. And you know, I love you. And I wanted to go to this church. You know, I want to get baptized, but I can't do it this without stopping uh, this sin. And I want to ask you more than that, not just stop smoking, but when someone else is smoking next to me, I don't want that smell like uh, to like it anymore. So that was it, a short prayer. But um, in that evening, when we go out and play football, my friends start to smoke and I, that smoke came to me and I feel it something in my stomach like, oh, something is not good. I feel so bad. What's wrong? I feel so sick. And in that point, I realized that God listened my prayer exactly that day. And since that day, I never had a problem anymore. And um, for me, it was an experience which I will never forget it. Um, and um, I want to tell everyone that um, if you really allowed God to come in your life, and says, God, I really have this problem, this sin, maybe smoking, maybe something else. But if you allow him to work in your life, the result will be in the next second. Um, after that, um, the other thing, my life go my next step was, um, well, I was, I was baptized in the Pentecostal church and um, went there at the church, but, um, my girlfriend in that time, which was Adina, um, she was Adventist. Well, we, I knew about that. We, we knew um, there were, I had some neighbor who was Adventist, but I never interested about what means Adventist and everything thing. But, and it came um, a really hard um, year, next year for, was a long year for me because we tried to talk about our difference between Pentecostal and Adventist. And um, our parents talk each other, we talk each other all day, every day. And I was saying one, uh, she was saying a different thing. And um, at a point um, I went and talked with my pastors and they said, no, it for God, they, all day are the same. So we keep the Sunday just because uh, was Jesus' resurrection, and we keep it that way. All the Christians keep it that way. So, yeah, it's Sunday. Sabbath is for Jewish or was in the Old Testament. It's not anymore available. But I wasn't convinced about that. So um, at that time, we dis I decided with the Dina that we need to stop uh, telling everyone else what is right and what is wrong. And we should study together. <clears throat> just us and we stop bringing uh, uh, our doctrine uh, and let's study just the bible nothing else just you and me and the bible that's it um, we didn't have problem we had a few meetings actually thinking about what difference are but there was only one problem the sabbath is it true or not um, i knew everything all the Examples from the Bible, we read all the verses uh, for Sabbath and none of them for Sunday. And, but I couldn't say you're right. It was that ego in me. Um, for, it was actually not just the ego. It was basically I just rediscovered God and I saw what God he made in my life in one year. And I was afraid that if I change my religion, I mean, I might possibly lose God. So I, I was afraid. I knew God was done in my life this year and I was afraid to lose it. So I remember that praying, I've done it for stop smoking. And I say, well, I'm, I'm a fool. Why I don't pray to God to answer to my prayer. So I stopped, um, I prayed to God. And while I was praying, I was talking to myself and says, look at, do you love God? And I'm saying, of course I love God all my heart so if for you is everything one uh, each day is different you know for god is not the same 
God created the earth in six days, but the seventh day, he blessed it. He didn't bless the first day or the second. He blessed the seventh day and he stopped and he rest. And I was thinking, yeah, that's, that's, that's right. So when God stopped in the seventh day, he didn't stop just God and that's it and the Adam and Eve working or something. No, everyone stopped. The whole universe stopped actually because God was focused on, on Adam and Eve, on, on earth and said, why will God change that? Because we can't find it in the Bible changing it. And actually we'll see that uh, on the new earth is going to be the Sabbath as well. So why, why God changed it? Oh, and I realized God didn't change it. And it says, well, if God didn't change it, that means we people change it. And if we do that, it's wrong. It's not good. So I was convinced about that. And I went to speak with my pastors again. And I told them, I'm sure the, the God is the same yesterday, today, and will be tomorrow forever. Uh, he doesn't change. That's what I learned about him in the Bible. And I, I'm sure the Sabbath was never changed. And I was surprised when the, both of them, both of the pastors says, um, you're right. If you do that, it's not wrong. You're right. And you have to do it. But if you do it, you need to do it properly. That means you can't worship on Sunday as well. Because God says work six days, but the seventh day you have to rest. So if you want to do it, you have to do it to keep the Sabbath. And that's it. You don't have to go it on Sunday to the church as well or something like that. So what I was thinking in that time, I remember, is it a God of Adventist? church it's a different god or is the same and uh, uh what god we show to the people because uh, i remember one um, um, um buddhist monk declared first time he says first time when i heard about god i learned that it's poor and he needs money and i says as a christian what god we present to our friends and what god we show to to our colleagues is it a God who just needs your money or just give me the money? Or is it a God full of love who, who, even when we are sinners and we didn't love God, he sent his son, he sent Jesus to come and pay with his life so we can be with him together. So this is our God. So, um, and I decided to say, um, God is the same. I learned it's not two gods, one in the Old Testament, and one in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, it's a God of, uh, if you don't listen, the, you have to die. And in the, in the New Testament, it's a God of love. No, uh, love's God was always, was this. Um, and um, that was the time when I decided to become an Adventist um, church member. But that's a, another long story because it took me more than a year to become a member <laughs> with the, church politics we have some problems uh, but I'm gonna not gonna talk about that so it's been like 11 12 years since I'm um, Adventist and I can say I'm I'm very happy about this and um, um, the other thing I want to say uh, the third prayer I've done was five years ago when the, we decided to come to England and I was a little bit um, scared because I was feeling good in the church where we came. Um, and uh, I said, finally, I, I'm all integrated in the church. We're working together in the committee and everything. It's, it's, I, I have a job here in the church doing it. So going to England, I, I don't know anyone there. What I'm going to do there? Because I'm, I'm a person who wants to talk, wants to have friends. I can't be quiet only in Bristol Church. <laughs> and uh, I decided um, to pray to God and say, God, you know where I'm going. Um, I don't know anyone. So I'm going to need some friends and I'm going to need to find a church. I'm not afraid to go there because I know you're already there and I know you already prepared something for me. So please give me confidence that where I'm going there is, is nothing to be scared of or uh, something like that. 
and uh, it was uh, when we moved in Stafford, we had uh, like a few couple of months. We didn't have the car yet. We had to buy one to go. So we need to buy a car um, to go to church. We didn't actually need it one here in Stafford, <laughs> but uh, we say we need to buy a car to go to church. And I keep searching um, the churches around us and um, Bilson came a few times in my eyes, even if he's not closer to us, it's quite far. <laughs> but um, we decided to go. And um, first time when I entered in the church, I, I remember everything. I was just in the first round, back, back round, actually. We stayed there and I see everyone happy and smiling and was so nice. And uh, the program and something else, actually, what I love it and... Um, I think you are unique. I don't know. I, I never find another church. It's um, actually the problem I had in the our church was the break between um, Sabbath school and the service. Uh, because in the church, in that 10, 15 minutes, it's like in the market. Everyone talking and the noise and every you're, you're like not in the church. But when we when the break started first time, I saw brother. Donald went in front and with the brother Clarence and they start to sing. And that was, I was keep talking to my church, why in this uh, break we don't sing? Why people who wants to talk, go stay outside or in the corridor and inside the church, we sing or breathe or do something else, not just to be so noisy. And this one, when I saw Donald and Clarence starting to sing and all the church starting to sing in this break, and outside in the corridor, people talking. I say, wow, this is fantastic. And at the end, when, I, when the sermon was finished, not everyone just ran away to their home. You all stay together and greeting us all and talking to us was, was like I never been there. Uh, I, I was feeling like I always been there with you, not just first time. So for, for me, it was something uh, extraordinary. And I said to God, I realized that, that God answered to the, my third prayer, but he answered more. He didn't give me a friends, some friends. He says, Lucien, I give you a family. So that's what you are for me now, uh, my Bilson family. And it's fantastic to... Um, how I would just find out today that we are from nine countries and that's fantastic nine countries in under one roof and all having one goal to serve Jesus and this is fantastic and I hope God uh, help us and bless us continues from now on and to do the same and show the love you share it to me so you can share it to everyone who comes to, to Bilson Church Amen. 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 You know, brethren, I don't know about you, when you are listening to Brother Lucas, um, so, um, to, I'm going to say sermon, you know, when you're listening to his testimony, what went on in your mind? I think all of us could identify with what he was saying. I could see a couple of people smiling because they realized, yes, I have been through that particular process. It may not be from one church to the next, you know, if are changing from one habit to the next, but, you know, each one of us had was to go through that transformation and we could identify. So, but, uh, Lucas, or should I call your proper name, Lucien, yes, right? Yes. You know, we learned that last Sunday, and it's something that you will learn about in a few moments, where he told us about his name and uh, what was the proper pronunciation of it. You know, and uh, it was an education in itself. And therefore, you know, I personally have been blessed through your testimony. And, uh, you know, we want to give God thanks and we want to say more afterward. I don't want to dive into it. 
but I just feel as if my stomach, or should I say my belly is now full with food. You know, because the testimony, you know, I can see others smiling and I have a feeling I've got a witness to say that, you know, it is, I've never heard him spoke so much before. <laughs> Um, I never have done, you know, all the time we, and we've been in committee meetings and various things, I've never heard him, you know, and as a matter of fact, I was shocked, even last Sunday when Clive was asking him to do something, you know, he's saying, no, 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 brother, I should have, he should have spoke before, we would have had depression, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, nothing ever happens before his time. Even though you're going away, we will still have Zoom and we can e invite you on Sabbath to present a sermon to us. <laughs> now we know you can do it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and I can see by our members, again, I'd love those who are undercover to be able to show yourself so that they can see you. This is their last Sabbath, brethren. Mm -hmm. For those of us who are able to show our faces, please do that. You know, we're going to sense bad manners, but you know, I don't know your circumstances. You know, so please show your face so that they can see you instead of names. Thank you very much for those who are coming on. Thank you. Amen. You know, I really appreciate it. I'm very appreciative. <coughs> Thank you. Right, at this time, it's three minutes to one. Mm. Mm, I can hear somebody say, hmm. It's me. Oh, Sister Scarlett, thank you, sis. Mm. I, I'm in a dilemma at the moment, you see. We've got a sermon, and I will ask you to forgive us. Today is a special day, so our service will be a bit longer than normal. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Oh, yeah. praise God. I can see the head moving. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm yeah. sorry, I can't see those who are not showing their face, but I would be of the opinion they are in agreement. So at this time, I'll hand it over to Sister Adina. And afterwards, we'll have a meditation by Christina. Mm. Sister Dina? Um, it's supposed to introduce the speaker, actually. <coughs> um, so I'm not sure if the song will be before the sermon or after uh, the no. sermon. Uh, we will have the song before the sermon. Before the sermon, yes. right? So, would you like to introduce the speaker now, or yes, please? Yes, please. Okay. So, the speaker name is uh, Laurentiu Otlakan. He is um, a person that I know for many, many years ago. Uh, when I was in high school, he was the pastor in my little village. And at school, we have a class that was called uh, religion. And everybody has the right to do his religion. So at school, he came and he teaches us from the Bible for all the Adventist uh, children. So I have to say that if I know uh, a few about uh, Revelation, is because of him. We have a notebook and he uh, went step by step every verse with us. Um, and he took us to different church activities uh, as a teenager. So I can remember all that part that uh, the four years when I was in high school, he was the pastor in our village. And I have appreciated a lot his. Um, his activity. After that, um, he, his wife gave birth 
and uh, was um, he, they had to move actually from the country so they went to united states um and they started a different activity there in the hospitals and he is still uh, doing his uh, hospital chaplain even today but because um uh, i was uh, asked by clarence to get a romanian um a uh, Romanian speaker. I, I don't know why my, in, my thought instant went to him, despite I know loads of Romanian uh, pastors uh, everywhere, but that was my thought. And I spoke with him and he was happy to record for us um, a ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to have the song. Happy Sabbath to all of you. First of all, I want to apologize for my accent. I am originally from Romania. My name is Christian Laurentiu Otlakan. I am a chaplain serving in the hospital right now. Um, I have served as a pastor back in uh, 2001 2006 in Romania and I was a pastor in the same church with um, Adina and Lucian Bogdan I am so happy they 
remember me and they invite me to open the Bible for this morning. I have a title for the sermon. I took this title from Genesis 31 verse 49. May the Lord keep watch between you and me when we are away from each other. This Sabbath, it's um, a special day for, for you. Um, in a way, it's a sad day because um, um, it's a Sabbath in which we have to say goodbye. Adina and Lucian are moving forward, making some challenges in their life. And maybe it's a time when you ask questions. Um, how the future is look like and if God will be with me. Um, as a chaplain in the hospital, I meet every day people who such a question. Um, they are asking themselves if God is with them. Um, I want to tell a story even from the beginning. Brenda was a girl who wanted to learn uh, rock climbing. One day she was uh, trying to escalate a rock and uh, during um, the ascent the climber above her snapped a rope against Brenda uh, against Brenda's eye and knocked out her contact lens. Now you know how teeny are they. Uh, it was impossible to find um, a contact lens. Anyway, hardly she got back down and there was another team that trying to escalate that rock. And someone from that team just shouted, hey guys, anybody lose a contact lens? That was an amazing question because um, that was impossible. But uh, the story is amazing because not only, not only because someone found Brenda's contact lens, but when Brenda asked that guy where he found her contact lens, he said, an ant was slowly carrying that contact lens across the face of a rock. So, my brothers and sisters, my message today came from Jacob and Laban history found in Genesis chapter 31, 49. And uh, the idea, the message is that God is watching over us. Even though this um, event have um, sometimes uh, a broken relationships or um, have difficulties during this relationship, the verse itself it's amazing and very good for this occasion today. May the Lord keep watch between you and me when we are away from each other. God is not just far away and distant. He is very near, intimately involved in the details of our lives. That's our God. Have you ever had 
to leave a place of comfort and immense joy for you? We will see that Jacob decides to leave a place that has held some comfort and victories over the past approximately 20 years. Jacob just decided to continue his walk with God and God clears, leads him in the direction of his home. Now I have a question for Adina, Ruchan, but for everybody. Are you willing today to be led to whatever home God may have in store for you and your family? Verse 44 said, Come now, let make a covenant, you and I, and let it serve as a witness between us. After having agreed to these matters, Laban said a last farewell to his daughters and their children, blessing them, Laban returned to his home and, home and Jacob to his home with his family on, and uh, with his possessions um, which were secure under the promises of God. Dear brothers and sisters, God steadfast love and commitment to never leave us or forsake us. That is uh, another rock in our lives. God is our constant companion through life. His strength and presence in our lives enable us to overcome the challenges that we face, to remain strong, faithful and hopeful. Like a good parent, that is our God. God knows our going out and our coming in. We matter to God. God is not too distracted with uh, cosmic occurrences to neglect us. God is intimately involved in our lives. We may debate about what prayers God answers or if God really cares about our golf game, or who wins the Super Bowl. But we can affirm that God is intimately involved in our lives. God walks with us through life. God leads us and guides us. God protects us and watches over us. During my work, I can see that the life is an adventure. Each one of us have something in their lives. The life is not easy. We face something, each one of us. Life is an adventure. But it is an adventure that we are not face alone. That is a good news. Psalm 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. And our Savior Jesus said, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them shall fall to the ground apart from your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. That's a great message today. Whatever questions you may be able to answer and conclusion we may draw about this story, one thing stands out. The story is about change. The story between Jacob and Laban is about change. 
Jacob, now Israel, it's a changed man after this experience. And I can say Laban is a changed man. Every person must undergo transformation. The result of Christ's work in lives today can be summarized in two lines. Salvation of the soul and rehabilitation of the sinner. God is willing for you to be the very best you. You make it possible, but God make it happen. God's promise to us in Psalm 48, 14 is, He is our God forever and ever, and He will guide us until we die. Jesus tells His disciples in Matthew 28, 20, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The Lord says to Jacob in Genesis 31, verse 3, Return to the land of your father and grandfather and to your relatives there, and I will be with you. Such a nice promises. That God will be with us. No matter what, and no matter where you are, God is with you. For about 10 years, I live in the United States of America. Many people ask me, people from Romania, um, why you go in a different country? And uh, I answer, what is a border, what is a um, um, border for God? What is a country for God? I want just one assurance that God is with me. I, I am not, I don't need anything else. For those who know who knows uh, who know Christ the promise to you remains unchanged from the time when God spoke to Jacob and assured him of his presence and that promise <clears throat> is back in Genesis, Genesis 28 I am with you and I will protect you wherever you go I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. Sweet words, my brothers and sisters. Sweet words in a time of turmoil. Perhaps God is saying to you, now get ready and leave. God will always watch over us even though we are far away from each other. He was saying God is always watching over us. Even though we are not together, you are in a different place. I am in a different place. But God is there and God is here. He is omnipresence. God is everywhere. God is there where you are, and God is here where I am. So there is no need to change your attitude when I am away, because God knows. Another advice for you is be consistent with your life and character, no matter what. Doesn't matter where you are, be consistent with your character, with your life. May the Lord watch over you even 
if we are far away from each other. After church, we go in different places. Now, when we worship in a different way uh, through technology, we are already in different places. But the advice is be consistent. Even if you are not together in the middle of church, together with the brothers and sisters, be consistent. Why is Christian consistency important? The word consistent means you are dependable, constant and steady. You are not self-contradictory. You are there to the same basic principles you believe in. And you are coherent and firm. Christians need to be consistent always in our words, life and conduct. Because people are uh, observing our every move. Not just God watch over us, but people watch us. They are aware of all our mistakes and failures in life. Psalm 32 verse 8 I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. And I want to remind you again, the verse uh, 15 in Genesis 28, uh, God says to Jacob, I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised to you. And Psalm 121 verse 2 and 3 says my help comes from the lord the maker of heaven and earth he will not let your foot sleep he who watches over you will not slumber in our journey of life we can celebrate god's presence power and care in our life At the end of my meditation, let me close by reading the following story by U.S. Army Chaplain Jerry Winter that so vividly portrays for us the watch care of God upon our lives as believers. The passenger of the passengers of the bus. Watches, watched sympathetically as the young woman with the white cane made her way carefully up the steps. She paid the driver and using her hand to fill the seats, walked down to aisle and found the seat he told her was empty. Then she settled in, placed her briefcase on her lap, and rested her cane against her leg. It had been a year since Susan, 34, became blind. Due to a medical misdiagnosis, she had been rendered sightless, and she was suddenly torn into a world of darkness, anger, frustration, and self-pity. Once a fiercely independent woman, Susan now felt condemned by this terrible twist of fate to become a powerless, helpless burden on everyone around her. How could this have happened to me? She would 
plead. Her heart noted with anger. But no matter how much she cried or prayed, she knew the painful truth. Her sight was never going to return. A cloud of depression hung over Susan Wan's optimistic spirit. Just getting through each day was an exercise in frustration and, and also in exhaustion. And all she had to cling was her husband, Mark. Mark was an Air Force officer and he loved Susan with all of his heart. When she first lost her sight, he watched her sink into despair and was determined to help his wife gain the strength and confidence she needed to become independent again. Mark's military background had trained him well to deal with sensitive situations, and yet he knew this was the most difficult battle, difficult battle he would ever face. Finally, Susan felt ready to return to her job, but how would she get there? She used to take the bus, but was now too frightened to get around the city by herself. Mark offered to drive her to work each day, even though they work at the opposite ends of the city. At first, this uh, comforted Susan and fulfilled Mark's need to protect his sightless wife, who was so insecure about performing the sightless task. Soon, however, Mark realized that this arrangement wasn't working. It was hectic and costly. Susan is going to have to start taking the bus again, he admitted to himself, but just the thought of mentioning it to her made him cringe. She was still so fragile, so angry. How will she react? On Friday morning, Susan took the bus to work as usual. As she was paying for her fare to exit the bus, the driver said, Boy, I sure envy you. Susan wasn't sure if the driver was speaking to her or not. After all, who on earth will ever envy a blind woman who had struggled just to find the courage to live for the past year? Curious, she asked the driver, Why do you say that you envy me? The driver responded, It must feel so good to be taken care of and protected like you are. What do you mean? She asked. The driver answered, You know, every morning for the past week, a fine-looking gentleman in a military uniform has been standing across the corner watching you when you get off the bus. He makes sure you cross the street safely and he watches you until you enter your office building. Then he blows you a kiss, gives you a little salute, and walks away. You are one lucky lady. Tears of happiness pour down Susan's cheeks, for although she couldn't physically see him, she had always felt Mark's presence. She was blessed, so blessed, for he had given her a gift more powerful than sight, a gift she didn't need to see to believe, the gift of love. The gift of love that can bring light where there had been darkness. Brothers and sisters, 
God watches over us in just the same way. We may not know He is present. We may not be able to see His face, but He is there, nonetheless. Be blessed in this thought. God loves you, and even though you cannot see Him and watches over you. May the Lord keep watch between you and me when we are away from each other. Amen. 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 God is watching Amen. over us. Amen. Thanks for that message. And uh, it is something that all of us uh, has got to remember. And the part I like is when it says, be consistent in our Christian walk of life. Whatever we are at home, we'll be the same in our community and be the same at church. Be consistent. Don't deviate in any way day after day. Be the same. You know, and that is the message. Thank you.